This is a rocket boat that's almost entirely 3D printed and uses actual rocket fuel to get up to some impressive speeds. I've actually printed three of these things so that we can race them and oh, see oh, which is best. Oh, oh no! So why have I decided to take speedboats into the space age? Well, I'm currently working on converting my giant hydroplane to jet power with a micro turbojet engine, because that sounds sensible. So I thought it would be a good idea to maybe learn some more about hydroplanes by making some really small rocket powered ones. This tiny speedboat is really simple and can be printed on basically any 3D printer. It's got a carbon spar and adjustable floats at the front that help it get up onto the surface of the water while being pushed along by a rocket. All you do is light the engine, run away, and hope for the best. With about a kilogram of thrust and a burn time of over 16 seconds, these things are really a recipe for chaos. Oh, and did I mention that you have no control of this thing whatsoever? Because you can't manufacture your own in the UK, I decided to use some commercially available long burn motors. These are the same as those I used on my rocket powered helicopter. I tested lots of these before naturally opting to design my boat around the largest motor I could get my hands on. As in the past, I based my hydroplane on an outrigger configuration, which is extremely stable thanks to being low and spread out, and also low in aerodynamic drag thanks to its small frontal area. The way outriggers stay stable is by skimming along the surface of the water on three points. First they raise themselves out of the water using lift from the floats and hull until they have as little contact with the water as possible. With the three contact points spread out, the craft can stay nice and steady on the water. So I designed my first boat on Fusion 360, printed one out on my Ender 3 printers, assembled it and then it was time to test it out. So would it work off the bat? Probably not, but to make sure that I had lots of nice still non-wavy water, I made a controlled speedboat test track. First of all to see if this thing actually floats I suppose. Oh dear, so that end's definitely uh, not as buoyant as I want it to be. I started with a smaller motor to begin with to see what would happen. All right, in the words of Alan Shepard, let's light this candle. Let's go. <laughs> well, that was certainly interesting. We didn't seem to be hydroplaning. Uh, I think that's probably because the, the craft wasn't going fast enough, so we didn't get up on the plane. Promising start. Why don't we just stick a bigger motor in it? Uh... Yes. Right, that's the limit for now. Back in my workshop, I studied the footage to see what was going right and what was going wrong. And it seemed that the boat was doing all right getting up onto the plane with the larger motors, but maybe it would help if the thing was a bit more buoyant to begin with. So to fix the buoyancy, I increased the size of the boat by about 20% and added more width to that tail skid. Now to check if that had improved it. The increased buoyancy had certainly seemed to help and the boat now appeared to be able to handle the huge amount of power from the biggest motor. Getting up onto the plane and accelerating along the short length of test track. I'm now taking health and safety a bit more seriously. <laughs> Some other things I tried were fitting the smaller floats of the previous design to the current design's larger fuselage, and the resulting slightly nose down angle of the craft seemed to help with keeping the boat pressed into the water rather than jumping out of it. Okay, this is all good when traveling down a piece of gutter, but I didn't think that was all that fun. So how stable would this hydroplane be on the open water? And would it go in a straight line? Well, chaps, you're about to find out. I found a stretch of river to test the boat on, but for an open water test run, I would need some way of retrieving the rocket boat when it comes to the end of its speedy journey. So I dusted off my old hydrofoil and put it back into service. First off, I decided it would be a good idea if I used the smallest motor I had, even though in previous tests it didn't make the boat go very fast. So not sure why I did this, apart from just getting used to chucking a boat in water and hoping for the best, I suppose. Well, I went in a straight line. <laughs> After collecting the hydroplane with the HMS Nippy Shippy, I installed the big boy motor and let it loose. Just bear in mind here, once you've lit a solid fuel rocket motor, there's no way to stop it. After it had finished burning, Okay, uh, as I was saying, after it had finished burning, I could watch the footage back and see that the boat did seem to plane and track quite well until it appeared to take evasive action from torpedoing the side of the HMS Nippy Shippy, flipped probably due to catching one of those ripples at the wrong angle, and then traveled along on its side for a while before writhing around like a possessed fish. So two things to take away from this. One, waves are not your friend, and two, larger underwater fins are probably a big yes for getting this thing to go straight. 
Theoretically, a rocket hydroplane works much like any other rocket in terms of stability. It needs the centre of pressure to be as far behind the centre of mass as possible. The centre of pressure of a vehicle can be moved rearwards with larger fins, and the centre of gravity can be moved forwards by adding more mass at the front. So I printed out a couple of new boats with more infill on the sponsons and added some larger fins on the back. In theory, this should make the boats track better. The two new boats were different from each other as well, with the orange one having much wider spaced apart sponsons. Would they perform any different to each other though? To find out, it was time for a race between all three of these hydroplanes to see which was the best. Before I show you just how much better the new boats were, it's time for a quick ad from the sponsor of this week's video, Mel Science. They make monthly science boxes that you can subscribe to. These science boxes combine hands-on experiments with VR and AR technologies to engage kids to study science. As you'll know from my YouTube channel, science is about exploration, experiments, discovery and asking questions. Playful exploration of science comes naturally to all children, and this subscription with one new set delivered to your door every month for up to two years can help to encourage that. Personally, it was playing with toys and construction kits like these science kits that helped to get me to where I am today, building crazy inventions and vehicles like the speedboats in this video. I should point out though, all of these kits are completely safe. They are thoroughly tested and comply with the US and EU. 18 exciting sets are included in one subscription plan. Everything you need will come with the experiments, apart from common household items Items such as batteries and stuff like that. They also include free VR lessons in the Mel VR app and free online lessons with professional science teachers. Make sure to check out Mel Science with the link in the description and use the promo code AIR50 to get 50% off your first box of any Mel Science monthly subscriptions. A big thanks to Mel Science for sponsoring my video and now back to the lake. Alright, now to see which hydroplane is best in a final showdown. Would it be the original white boat with the original small fin and rearward centre of gravity? The blue boat with its narrowly spaced floats? Or would it be this orange wide boy? I brought along some spectators to fire up the competition, although they didn't really know anything about what was happening. Which one do you think is going to be best? <laughs> orange one. Why? Because it's orange. First up, the old one. Uh, let's see how uh, this does uh, on a calmer day. Oh, look at that! Oh, so it's gone. It's gone. What the? Where is it? Oh, it's under the water. It's torpedoing. <laughs> it torpedoed. <laughs> that was amazing. Now to get it back with the HMS Snippy Shippy and then fire up the next one to see if it would go any further. Prepare yourself here for something crazy to happen. Oh, it's a bit jumpy. <laughs> oh. oh, oh, it's gone under again. Oh, oh no! Oh no! <laughs> that was so good. That was amazing. Oh no! <laughs> it came straight for us. Oh my god. No, you don't need the nippy, it's just a few. Yeah, we... <laughs> it hit the nippy shipping. Wait, I think it just missed it, didn't it? It oh, just it jumped just over it. it. Team Orange! <laughs> Team Orange! <laughs> so yes, that's right. This orange boat did seem to be more stable, despite it apparently becoming sentient, deciding it would prefer to be a torpedo, and then attacking firstly the nippy shippy, and then us. <laughs> The rescue boat was then checked for leaks, which, to be fair, probably weren't the result of the torpedo attack, before it was time for round three. Team Blue, let's see how far this one with the narrow sponsons will go. Ready, Mike? Oh dear. Oh! oh. Something popped. It just exploded. <laughs> So another decent run before torpedo time commenced, but this time something new had happened. Yeah, something exploded then, didn't it? This is where I pick it up and it's not there because it's just sunk. <laughs> oh yeah, that, the back end exploded on that. <clears throat> so the uh, clay um, thing, the nozzle on the back, that seems to have uh, actually exploded out the back. So. I think this was a failed motor, but they're not really meant for water, are they? We tried repeating each run, but each boat was much the same, even to the extent that the orange boat made another beeline for the edge of the lake. Oh, look at it go! Oh my goodness! Oh no! Did you see how well it went though? Retrieval efforts. Look at that concentration face. 
So it seemed we had a winner. Which was best? Orange. Orange. <laughs> Keeps you on the edge Orange? A bit. Yeah, Is it orange. team orange all the way? Kept you on the edge. Kept you on the edge, <laughs> especially when it was coming towards your yeah, face. Yeah, get up and run. <laughs> yeah, Michael? I'm now, a, I'm now a team orange convert. Team orange convert? <laughs> yeah, team orange oh. is definitely the most exciting. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe I should try this again on a calmer day with stiller water and maybe make a new boat that's a lot bigger, has bigger rocket engines and is radio controlled. So let me know if you like the sound of that. If you want to make one of these boats, then check out my website. There's a link in the description box down below. Don't try these experiments at home though. I'm not responsible for you putting rocket motors on things. Uh, yeah, just print one as a desk ornament or something. Now, if you like this video, then make sure to check out one of these over here because you'll probably like them as well. Uh, there's lots of probably explosions and rockets and stuff going on in these. So yeah, check one out, let me know what you think. Alright chaps, I will see you on the next video.